Hello everybody! Today's video is a book buddy-a-thon wrap-up for the five books I read for the five challenges. If you don't know, Book Buddy-a-thon is a week-long read-a-thon hosted by Elena from Elena Reads Books and her friend Sam <laughs> from Cold Tea and Crumbs. My, my dog just came inside. She's very excited about the dogs outside, which is why she is inside now. Um, so yes, uh, the readathon is uh, focused on the idea of reading books with your friends, and one of the challenges every time I do this is to buddy read something with somebody. So my buddy for the readathon was Bree from Stories from the Shelf, and we had a really good time. <laughs> I really enjoyed reading a bunch of things this week. I read five books, and I read something for each of the five challenges. The first three of these I'm not going to talk about in much detail because I have filmed separate reviews for them. The first book is The Gate to Women's Country by Sherry S. Tepper. This is the book that Brie and I buddy read together, which is very interesting. I think we both liked it, but we both had some similar reactions to it. This is one of the books, like I said, that I'm gonna do a separate review on. I've actually already filmed it, and it turned into a slight deviation into feminist science fiction, but it was a book that quite made me think um, and challenged how I expect to see men and women and, frankly, feminist themes portrayed in science fiction today. Uh, you can kinda tell based on the cover that it has some it has a very Greek or Hellenic feel to it. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic science fiction tale where humanity has been kind of thrust back into a pre-technology age. And certainly with both the way that their society is set up and the influence of the play, the play Iphigenia based on the Trojan women that's interspersed in the story, it just really had that Greek feel to it. I likened this to more like reading fantasy than science fiction until I got to the end of the book. Next is The Cold Between by Elizabeth Bonesteel. I read this for the challenge of reading a book that has a word in the title that begins with the same letter as your buddy's name. It's sort of a military science fiction book, very strong on the space romance genre. It has a definite murder mystery vibe to it. There's actually a murder in it. This veered very close to a two-star book for me, but I think I ultimately gave it three stars, like maybe two and a half, because it was enjoyable to read, very fast-paced to read, but I could not forgive some of those flaws that I just really thought should have been fixed by an editor. Like, I was really surprised that that lack of knowledge, I think, that Bone still had about the military world hadn't been pointed out, but then again, I read it like military science fiction and not like a space romance, and that perspective is very different, I think, from what some people will bring when they come to read this. There was enough good, fun stuff in it that I will definitely read the next book in the series whenever my library gets it. And the third book that I've already done a separate review on is Speak by Louisa Hall. I read this for the book that has your buddy's favorite color on the cover, and that is green. I actually really love the cover of this book. I think it's very bright and colorful, and it has red, which is my favorite color. It has green and yellow and blue. It's just I think it's very striking. Uh, the book itself, not as striking. It is about the evolution, the various iterations of an artificial intelligence, or rather an attempted AI project and the people that contribute to the major versions of the project over time. I think it's really up in the air about whether this is actually artificial intelligence or not, but yeah, another one. I thought it was really let down by the lack of connections between the individual narratives. There are five different people telling the story, and there needed to be more overlap, there needed to be more depth. I just felt like it barely scratched the surface of what could have been with the story. It is more literary or even more historical fiction than science fiction, which could also be why I didn't connect to it very much. It's just not a... might be a genre problem for me, honestly. It was very quick to read. I almost felt guilty for how quickly I read it, like maybe I would have understood it or, or I missed something in it because I read it so quickly, but mostly I just thought it was okay. Then I read As You Like It by William Shakespeare. This is the book that I gave Brie three choices and this is the one she picked for me to read. And I guess this is a comedy because everybody and their brother 
or their cousin gets married by the end. That's how, as you can tell, tragedies are where everybody dies, comedies are where everybody gets married. Based on the critical essay and text in this Folger Shakespeare Library edition, people think, seem to think this play is about primogenitor or the system of the eldest son inheriting everything from his father and then younger sons get nothing, which does not engender friendly feelings between siblings at all. I thought it was kind of an okay comedy, mostly centered around a few snippets of witty dialogue, and if you really want to read a play where four couples get married by the end, including the fool, I think the fool is one of the ones who gets married at the end, a young man named Orlando has a falling out with his older brother Oliver because Oliver inherited their father's wealth and Orlando thinks that Oliver hasn't kept his father's promises to, I don't know, keep Orlando in the style to which he is accustomed or to give him the education or means or whatever that he expects that his father wanted him to have. Orlando ends up meeting Rosalind, who he falls in love with. Rosalind is the daughter of Duke Sr., who has been ousted by his younger brother, Duke Frederick, who is the father of Celia? Or have I got that backwards? I'm not- I don't care. Anyway, Duke Frederick takes a dislike to Orlando and then he banishes his niece, which means that Orlando and both the women, Celia and Rosalind, end up bumming around the Forest of Arden, where Duke Sr. also is. And there's a lot of witty banter, there's cross-dressing because Rosalind is cross-dressing as a, as a young man named Ganymede. She ends up meeting Orlando in the guise of Ganymede where she basically tells him she's a love guru and she's gonna like prove to him whether he's really in love with this rom woman Rosalind or not. And at one point there is a mock wedding ceremony that they can't quite go through with like Orlando is like fake exchanging vows with this young man he thinks is, is a man named Ganymede and it's actually Rosalind. I was like, what? I guess it must have been way more of a joke, but when I first read it I was like, seriously? Two young men in a forest play acting, they're exchanging wedding vows. Wow. <laughs> It's not gonna be memorable. I'm already starting to forget what actually happens in it. One of the, the best uh, lines in the play are I think Jake's lines, his whole, the very famous the, all the world is a stage thing is his little monologue soliloquy. And it's basically completely forgotten after he says it. Like it's just this one awesome speech in the middle of pretty much mediocre banter. So, Eh, I'm glad I read it, but I will never reread it. Uh, one of those three-star comedies for me. And then the last thing is Intertwingled by Peter Morville. This is a nonfiction book that I picked for my extra, my, my fifth book, just whatever I wanted to read. Um, this is a very short book that attempts to draw connections between a whole host of topics kind of all relating it back to an argument that Morville is making about the importance of information architecture. So this is why I read it, because Morville is, um, well, he's a very big name in the field of information architecture. He helped create it. Well, he didn't coin the term, I don't think, but he is one of the big movers and shakers in the field. And he is the co-author of information architecture for the web, which is like a Bible. I feel like there's something a little bit lacking in these things that Morville has written other than information architecture for the web. Uh, they tend to blend his personal feelings and a whole host of other things into one thing, which is okay, but this book in particular left me wanting a little bit more. Um, some things that it talks about in relation to information architecture and information curating and stuff um, are things like, well, systems thinking, um, Buddhism, classification, synesthesia, quantum entanglement, and volleyball. I really enjoyed the parts where he draws these almost unlikely connections between such a, a variety of things that I also find interesting. I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool that Buddhism shows up in a book about information architecture, um, but it's definitely one of those things that it excites you because you are excited to see those connections being drawn, but it doesn't go into detail about any one thing. So it's a starting point, it's a jumping off point, and the thing I most wanted by the end of this was a decent bibliography or a resource list. Like, 
he has a lot of citations. There are maybe 30 or 40 citations for every chapter, but I really thought it needed almost like an annotated bibliography for further reading. Like if you find this stuff to be interesting, go read this other thing. So this seems like a very short synthesis of a whole bunch of things that Morville wants to talk about and then it just sort of ends. Mm. There needs to be a further conversation implied after that or something. So I thought it was a very good quick read that really made me happy while I was reading it. Strange as that may be to say, it made me happy to read this and I really need to read more nonfiction stuff about these things that I actually care about. Like it's been so long since I read a book that even mentioned information architecture. It was exciting to read, but could have been a bit more. I guess it's, that seems to be a theme with the things I read for Book buddy -a -thon. Even though I didn't love anything amazingly, like I think I rated all of these three stars. Hmm. But the experience was pleasurable and that's what counts. So yeah, uh, let me know if you participated and if you read anything great and I will talk to you again later. Bye.